Edgar Allan Poe's The Oblong Box. Once upon a sea breeze in Charleston, South Carolina, pondering aboard the Independence, an ocean liner, was Will Hopkins and his wife, Elvira. Well, it's close on departure time. Are you sure Cornelius White and his bride will be aboard? Oh, it said so in the Charleston Herald yesterday, and I checked the passenger list, which plainly states Mr. and Mrs. Cornelius White, cabin C and D. Do you think he'll remember you? Oh, my dear Elvira, we were the closest of friends. And there, by heaven, there he comes. Where? Where? The carriage that just came onto the dock. The man in it is Wyatt, and the woman at his side must be his lovely new bride, Rachel. But what in the world is in that wagon behind him? Will, it's the coffin. <laughs> no, Elvira, no. That oblong box doesn't contain a corpse. It contains a priceless painting, a copy of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. How do you know all this? The newspapers. Ah, Wyatt and his bride are coming up the gangplank. <laughs> I can't wait to see his face when he discovers his old friend, Will Hopkins. All right. Handle that box with care, will you? You hear me with care. Oh, I'm anxious to see the face of his bride. That's a pretty heavy veil she's Please wearing. Please be careful. She's beautiful. Absolutely ravishing. Why, Will, right. you met her. You know her. No, but I know Cornelius White. He could never stand an ugly woman. Not even a plain one. Uh, incompetent idiots. I'll speak to Captain Hardy about this. And you, you, sir, where can I find Captain Hardy? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know, Cornelius. Cornelius, you address me with a familiarity, sir, that I don't... Well, hold a moment. You're... You're... Will Hopkins. Your old college friend, Will Hopkins. Oh, yes, yes, so you are. Well, you certainly don't seem very happy to see me again after all these years. Uh, no, no, most happy. <laughs> Great pleasure, but I, I'm a bit upset at the moment... Good Lord, so what are you brainless sailors doing with that box? Damn it! I said keep it on an even keel and right side up. Oh, come now, Wyatt. There's no damage done and certainly a few bumps won't harm the painting if you pack it securely, that is. Oh, good heavens, I forgot my manners. My wife, Elvira. Dear, this is my old friend, Cornelius Wyatt. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, my wife, Rachel. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, now, you'll excuse us, I'm sure we... We've got to go at once to our cabin. Oh, uh, no, no, but, but wait now, I wait, wait a moment. Surely we're going to have the pleasure of seeing your bride. I mean, won't she raise her veil so we can look at this beauty you've married? Why, uh, Rachel, my dear, will your veil... Uh, oh. oh, not the beauty you expected, Hopkins? Well, no, uh, uh, no, that is, yes, yes, uh, most attractive. You are indeed most attractive, Mrs. White, or, or Rachel, if I may. Oh, of course you may. And now you must excuse us. Well? Well, is right. She's ugly. Certainly not beautiful. Will? Yes? Don't you sense something peculiar about all this? Something wrong, Elvira? The oblong box, it's in their cabin. In the same cabin the Wyatts occupy? Yes. Uh, how do you know? Seems to me Wyatt's gone out of his way to keep their door closed at all times. Well, just as I was coming down from my stroll on deck, their door opened and I saw Rachel go into the other cabin. And before Mr. White could close the door, I saw it. The box. But that, that, that makes no sense. These cabins are anything but spacious. In fact, they're downright tiny. Well, this is the damnedest thing I've ever heard. Well, it's, it's idiocy, unless... Yes? That must be it. The painting is so valuable. In fact, Elvira, it's beyond price. Why it would even run the risk of letting it out of his sight. Which reminds me, what do you say we have a look at it? Come, come along. What is it? Your old friend, Will Hopkins, Wyatt. What do you want? Well, I would ask you and your wife in, but as you can see, there's scarcely room to move about because of the box. Oh, that's what we came about, Mr. Wyatt. Meaning what, Mrs. Hopkins? Why, Will thought you wouldn't mind if we had a look at the painting. Oh, I see. And can we? I, I, no, I'm, I'm sorry, it's out of the question. You see, I had to adopt extreme precautions in creating it. Especially to guard against the dampness of a six-day voyage to New York. Uh, the box is sealed. Sealed? You don't say. With melted wax. Believe me, I, I'd be more than glad to show you the painting, old friend, but it simply can't be done. Oh, I understand. I'm sorry, Elvira, that we couldn't... Uh... What's wrong? Strange. 
Very strange. Oh, now, will you stop? There's nothing strange about not wanting to open a box. He's going to infinite pains to seal with melted wax. But it isn't sealed with melted wax or anything else. What do you mean? You didn't smell it? Well, now you mention it, there, there was an odor of some sort. Yes, an odor of some sort. Come to bed, Will. It's 11 o'clock. No, no, Elvira. I thought I might take a stroll on deck before turning in. Oh, no. Do you think that's wise? There's a gale blowing. What? What? In... Will! Shh, shh, shh. But what is it? Well, this is the damnedest thing. The damnedest thing. What? Will Hopkins, if you don't tell me what you... Rachel Wyatt. She just came out of their cabin, looked up and down the passage to be sure she wasn't seen, and then Elvira... She went into the cabin where they keep the luggage. Well, maybe she needs something out of it. Shh, shh, shh. What is that? It's coming from the Wyatt cabin, and it sounds to me as if... As if Wyatt's prying off the lid of that oblong box. You're right. That's exactly what it sounds like. Exactly what it... Was. Then it... Then it... Then it couldn't have been sealed. I told you that. But... But why would he lie? Especially to an old friend. Well, you are naive. Cornelius Wyatt no longer considers you an old friend or even a friend. He doesn't want anything to do with you. As for why he lied, he lied because he doesn't want you or me or anyone else to know what's in that box. What's really in that box. Shh, 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 listen. What's that? What's he saying? He's, he's, he's crying. Don't kill me. Yes, I can hear him. Poor man. Will, what is he crying over? It can't be the painting, even if it had been damaged when those sailors bumped the box. Box my foot. It's a coffin. Elvira, I'm going over there. Wyatt? Wyatt, it's me, Will Hopkins. Open up. Wyatt, Wyatt, do you hear me? Let's go in, Elvira. Will, the cabin's empty. And so is the box. Neither a painting nor a corpse. Why, it's in trouble, Elvira. Serious trouble. But there's nothing in the box, so why do you think he's in trouble? Because there was something in it, and whatever he was sobbing over was in this oblong box, and it isn't here now. Where is it? Now, come on, let's see if we can find him in there. Will. Well, there he is, standing at the rail, gazing off across the water. There's, there's someone with him, a, a woman. Standing beside him. One of the passengers. Maybe. Only, if it is, I, I've never seen her before. Well, I've never, never seen anyone so beautiful. She's ravishing. She's that all right. Absolutely lovely face. That long, blonde hair blowing in the breeze. No wonder he was holding her close to him. Palmer on a waist and... Oh, hey, look. He's kissing her now. Well, oh... Oh, oh, good Lord. El Elvira. I, I, I think I'm going to faint. Take me below to our cabin. Yes, 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 but, 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 but what, what is it? What a terrible thought, a horrible thought, a what? horrible... What? What horrible thought? The thought, the thought that what, whoever she is, whatever she is, will, will, she must have been in that box. Uh, sit down, Mr. Hopkins, sit down. Thank you, Captain. Mr. Hopkins, as you know, we've had nothing but bad weather and bad luck since leaving Charleston Harbor three days ago. <laughs> I guess all your passengers are aware of that, Captain. It's getting worse. Even worse, the repair to the foremast isn't holding. And if the foremast goes, we'll be in serious trouble. There's a four-six gale out there right now, Mr. Hopkins. And it's whipping up. But, Captain... Why are you telling me all this? What can what can I do? Well, you can tell me something that I need to know. What is Mr. Wyatt carrying in that old brown box? Why, well, uh, a copy, uh, a priceless copy of The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. Have you seen it? Well, no. Well, the crew are beginning to think that it contains a body, a corpse. And that because of it, this ship is jinxed. Not his wife? 
You're telling me that the woman in that cabin across the passage, the woman wife introduced as his wife, is not? I don't think so, Will. A little chat I deliberately had with her because, quite frankly, Will, my suspicions had been aroused. Aroused by, by what? For one thing, Will, you said Mr. Wyatt was interested only in the most beautiful of women. And Rachel Wyatt is altogether plain. She's downright ugly, but, but that's no reason to suspect. Also, when I was talking to her, she slipped and called me Mum. Mum? Only a servant uses that word. Exactly. If you ask me, Captain Hardy's worst fears and realize the foremast is broken. Will, that bell. Will, isn't that the signal for the boat station? God help us, it is. Oh, Will. Will, what's going to happen to us? What are we going to do? Head for our boat station, that's what. Come on, come on. Oh, wait, wait, with my jewelry. The hell with the jewelry, woman. Come on. Wyatt. Yes? Wyatt, the ship's in danger. It, it, it may be foundering. That bell you hear, it's a call to all boat stations. Oh. Wyatt, stop staring at a corpse. Corpse? Corpse? The corpse. The body of your wife. Your dead wife. <laughs> She's not dead, Hopkins. That's what they said, the doctors. But they were wrong. Only sleeping. She's only sleeping, Hopkins. And soon she'll wake up very soon now. Wyatt. Wyatt. Isn't she beautiful? Rachel. Rachel, dear. What? Can you hear me? Wyatt. Wyatt. What are you come, doing? Come, darling. Time to wake up. Sweetheart. In heaven's name, man. She's dead. Rachel. Dead. Do you hear me? I can't wake her. Deep asleep. In a deep sleep, Hopkins. And help me. How? Lend a hand. I've got to get her on deck into a lifeboat. She's dead. Dead. There. She's sitting up. Oh, good Lord. Now we'll just... The Hopkins, if, if you'll only just please help me to get her out of this box. Quiet, quiet. Come to your senses. There. She's on her feet. Oh, oh my Lord. In a deep sleep. But that's all right. I'll walk her. We'll walk her up to the boat. Get, get your arm around her, Hopkins, on the other side. No. Uh, Hopkins, I can do this alone, but it would help if you... No. Damn it, Hopkins. Will you please? No. A lifeboat isn't expected to be the most comfortable place in the world. She's going down, I think. The ship getting lower in the water. Captain, is she? Yes. Fabrin. Look. Oh, he brought a corpse on deck. Look, he, he's propping it against the rail, his arm around it. Oh, he's kissing it. Who would take a corpse on deck? Who would make love to a corpse? Will, how gruesome. Beautiful. Beautiful, though, in a way. Beautiful? How can you say that? Because to him, she's still alive. And if there is a life after death, she must know that few men have ever loved a woman as... as he loves her. Uh, she's going now. My ship. Going. I hope you enjoyed the Oblong Box. Thanks for watching. <laughs>